I like to show this particular slide, and I like to give you this particular quote from a well-known author on China, Ted Fishman. He said this about the river that runs through Shanghai, the Huangpu River. He said, the banks of the Huangpu River running through Shanghai do not just bend, they mind bend. And I think many of you will have been on a ship, or many of you will have been in Shanghai, and you will have sailed out of Shanghai or into that city and I must say, I know of nowhere else in the world where for three hours you sail th down this particular river with industrial development on either side of the river as far as the eye can see. Quite astonishing. And those of you that haven't done that yet, please do so. What's also astonishing about China is the population and their understanding of how their position in the world is going to be affected in future. Let me show you this particular picture on the screen. And I love this particular picture. You might think sitting in the audience that the gentleman on this particular stage is a pop singer. As you can see, this shot is in, taken in, uh, in China, in Beijing, as it happens. This is not a Chinese pop singer singing the latest hit. This is an English language class in China. And the gentleman on screen, gentleman on screen is called Li Yang. And Li Yang runs a course called Crazy English, where tens of thousands of Chinese come to stadia across China, and he chants out phrases in English, business phrases, conversational phrases, and the audience react and they chant these phrases back. It might be basic. But what it does is it indicates the clamoring on the part of the Chinese to learn English. They are learning English at an astonishing pace. And indeed, the Chinese over the course of the next century will probably move in part away from manufacturing cheap products, as they have done so for the last 20, 30 years, to in fact offering services to all of us, something that the Indians have had a head start doing for the last decade or two. Li Yang and his crazy English class, a great, a great scene and epitomizes this quest for knowledge coming out of the developing world. There's an enthusiasm from these developing countries and perhaps that's why I like it so much. Sometimes I would like to see that enthusiasm in my home country as well, but when I see these depictions of Asia, I get very excited. I suppose some might get frightened, I get very excited. Now, here's a very lucky man uh, on the screen, because this lucky man is married to, uh, uh, to Yang Huiyan. She is worth 16.2 billion US dollars. She's the richest woman in Asia. She is heir to her family's property fortune. And again, I like to illustrate this because figures out this week show that there are now, all, well, not almost as many, but the country with the second highest amount of US dollar billionaires is now China. That's number two in the world. There are about 140 billionaires in US dollars now in China. That's where the money is moving. That's where capital accumulation is moving. Now, capital accumulation goes hand in hand with a society that indeed is becoming more and more skilled. And if you take a look at the figures of Chinese and Indian graduates in the fields of engineering and science, again, you see uh, a startling figures. The two countries, China and India, graduate a combined half a million engineers and scientists each year, compared to about 70,000 in the United States. Now, I'm not saying that all of those half a million engineers and scientists are of a particular standard. I think that there are some, there's certainly some controversy, but still, the figures show that those skilled professions are moving and moving quite rapidly east as well. And look at this particular statistic that comes, in fact, I might add, from Farid Zakaria's new book, The Post-American World. Uh, this particular st statistic from him suggests and says that China today, look at it, I mean, just look at it, look at it on the screen for a moment. China today exports in a single day more than the country exported in all of 1978. Look at that. Look at that development and look at the rapid nature of the development. When you visit China and you visit the factories in China, I was very fortunate a few years ago to go on a Chinese government-sponsored tour 
of uh, China, which of course is a very different experience all around. You get to see some remarkable sights of Chinese factory workers, and uh, just, the, just the size and the scale continues to astound. So what are some of the mega trends coming out of China? Clearly, I've mentioned before urbanization. It's going to be very important in taking that economy even further. In the past five years, about 100 million people have moved to cities in China. Almost 40% of the Chinese population is now urbanized. Another 130 million are going to move over the next decade. Almost 60% of Chinese will be urbanized by about 2020. And in urban areas, Chinese now will have an increased purchasing power as they move into the new middle classes. Today already, the average Chinese have some 10 times the purchasing power they had just a quarter century ago. And at this rate, uh, China will reach the USA's level in about 20 years and will pass them in terms of purchasing power in about 30 years or so. Quite substantial. For those of you that visit China, you know it's not just Shanghai and Beijing. There are other gleaming new urban cities. Chongqing in particular is the fastest urban center on the planet, fastest growing urban center. The population of Chongqing, I love these statistics, is already bigger than that of Peru or Iraq, with half a million people moving into the city in search of a better life on an annual basis. Astonishing figures. Uh, and it's not just the figures of cities. It's the infrastructure that China is putting in. That's what's making it such an important society. It's what I call across the world infrastructure competitiveness. Forward-thinking societies are spending money on infrastructure. And it's interesting. In the global economic downturn of last year, what did President uh, Obama do? He announced that the United States would now spend money on infrastructure. What did the Chinese do? They said, we will now spend money on infrastructure. That's critical and that's important, and I certainly applaud that. Look what the Chinese are doing in terms of their road network. It's astonishing. From not a single kilometer of highway in 1988, the Chinese now have a world-class network of some 40,000 kilometers of highways growing every single day, second only to the United States in size. And you know, for them, from those of you from the United States, what your interstate system did for the economy in the United States in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Look what that's going to do. The Chinese are just embarking upon this particular project right now.